Our reading is taken from Luke, chapter ten, beginning at verse twenty-five. Just then, a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, "What must I do to inherit eternal life?" Jesus said to him, "What is written in the law? What do you read there?" He answered, "You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength." And with all your mind, and your neighbour as yourself. And Jesus said to him, "You have given the right answer. Do this, and you will live." But wanting to justify himself, the lawyer asked Jesus, "And who is my neighbour?" Jesus replied, "A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and fell into the hands of robbers, who stripped him, beat him." And went away, leaving him half dead. Now, by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while travelling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him. And bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, "Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay whatever more you spend." Which of these three do you think? Was a neighbour to the man who fell into the hands of robbers. The lawyer said, "The one who showed mercy." Jesus said to him, "Go and do likewise." Hello and welcome to our video reflection for week five of our Keep Praying Lent season. Changed lives, generously changing lives. I think I need to be honest at this stage and say I find it easier to be generous to some people than others. If that's true of you too, then I'm comforted because it means I'm not alone. We do generally, don't we? There are certain situations that we find it easier to open our hearts to, and others that we find it more difficult. In some senses, that's important. We have an internal system of checks and balances and measures that help us to identify whether something is a worthy cause or not. That system of checks and balances is important because it stops us being scammed, stops us being deceived, helps us to evaluate the source of the request for help and to work out whether it's likely to be genuine or not. But it's also possible for that system of checks and balances to become skewed, shall we say, by our prejudices. Prejudices may be attitudes that we were brought up with, or attitudes we've developed as a result of past experiences. Prejudices which see Some as less deserving of our generosity than others, and that's where we find ourselves in this week's Bible story, which Primrose has just read to us. We find ourselves on the road to Jericho, with a man who's been left half dead, and another man who passes by and notices him. The two men, born in communities with a history of enmity between them, the Good Samaritan, as we call him, may well have had. A prejudice. He may well have been brought up with it. We don't know, because he chose not to let it influence his generosity. And maybe that's one of the reflections I take away from this week's story. Am I able to see where my own internal checks and balances have become skewed by my prejudices? Am I able to notice when I feel disinclined towards being generous because of? Who somebody is, where they're from, what their accents like, the colour of their skin, the job they do, any of those factors and more. And are we, as local communities, inclined to be more generous to some than others, as refugees arrive、uh, in our communities from Ukraine,、uh, a war which has a huge amount of、uh, public profile, a high status in the media, if you like. Are we inclined to be more generous than to those who flee war 
and conflict in Sudan, Nigeria, Afghanistan, for instance. How can we help our local communities to remain colourblind in the best sense of the world? How can we help to ensure that the generosity we give as individuals, as churches, uh, is not tainted by old or new prejudices, but is the open-handed generosity offered by the Good Samaritan, an example which Jesus gave as the way generosity should look. Jesus, you know how to weave a good story. You know how to catch our attention and to carry the point to its ultimate, astonishing conclusion. Once you sat in the afternoon sunshine, with the shadows dappling your face, and you told a story about neighbours. Broken bones, broken skin, broken faith in the entire human race. A day spent listening to the footsteps of the ones who were supposed to help. A day spent listening to footsteps passing, passing, passing. Footsteps fading, fading fading into indifferent silence. And the eventual breathless surprise at the one who does approach, who kneels, who lifts, who carries, who offers extravagant care. And then the question is turned to confront us. Who are we in the story? What are the choices we will make today, tomorrow? The day after? Will we allow our days to be disrupted by the unexpected need of another? Lord, forgive us when differentness quenches our generosity, when we are reluctant to reach out to those of a different race, class or religion to us. Confront us with our prejudices challenge us over our preconceptions, grow in us the joy of reaching across cultural divides to give and receive, to learn and connect. Amen. Jesus, forgive us when our greed leaves other people poorer. As we grow in our friendship with you, teach us what it means to be generous and help us build the kind of world where everyone has enough. Amen. Mm -hmm.